In the headlines, troops rescue 10 kidnapped victims, kill scores of bandits in some first state. President Tinubu meets Senate President, Speaker House of Assembly at Aso Rock as women demand deputy speakership position. Fuel price hike taking toll on commuters, petty business owners groan. And on the foreign scene, nine die in clashes in Senegal following opposition leaders sentencing. Hello and welcome to Trust News Update. I'm Darshan Husseina Usman. And we begin with security, where 10 kidnapped victims have regained their freedom in Zamfara State. They were rescued by the troops of the Joint Task Force Northwest of Operation Hatled and Daji after conducting a clearance operation in the Shinkaifi local government area of the state. The troops also killed several terrorists in the Anka local government area of Zamfara State. Trust TV gathered that the military operations were conducted on Tuesday, May 30, and Wednesday, May 31, across two local government areas. Sources say the troops conducted the operations and cleared terrorist camps at Alasanawa, Kayawa, Maizama, Duti, Dogongandu, Girari, Maiwa, Asarara, Gabawudi, Tungan Namada, Baje. Ruaje, Atarawa, Zungo, and Mania local government area of Shinkafi local government. During the clearance operation, the troops also dis recovered eight live cartridges, four AK-47 rifles, one PTK machine gun, three motorcycles, and several pieces of special ammunition. Troops also responded quickly by blocking the route which led to the company illegal mining site. On sighting the troops, the suspected courier man abandoned his motorcycle and a big bag containing 46 military jungle hats, 26 camouflage t-shirts, two desert boots, 14 different variants of military camouflage uniforms and one desert hand glove at the scene. President Bola Tinubu on Thursday met with the outgoing leadership of the 9th National Assembly to rob minds on the emergence of Senate President and Speaker of the House of Representatives of the 10th National Assembly. He also met with Representatives Tajuddin Abbas and Benjamin Kalu, who have both been selected as consensus candidates of the All Progressives Congress to run the race for Speaker and Deputy Speaker. Kendi Amodu reports. The race to produce the principal officers of the National Assembly is heating up with just a few days to go. President Numbu on Thursday met with Senate President Ahmad Lawan and Speaker of the House of Representatives Femi Bajabia Mila. Both have said emphatically that they are not interested in returning to the leadership of the National Assembly. For the Speaker, rumors are rife that a position in the executive arm is opening up for him. Well, I think we've all seen the benefits of a cordial relationship. Um, not necessarily in bed together, but cordial relationship. We've seen the benefits in the last four years, unless you, you unless you uh, don't want to be truthful. And we've seen the we've seen the 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 other side where you don't have a cordial relationship, and which only knows for the betterment of Nigeria. I think um, uh, the Tenth Assembly, um, for the sake of uh, Nigeria and for the sake of constituents, and having seen what happened in the last four years and what happened in the last eight years, will tell that same line. As for the Senate President, he says he has done. No, 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 I've never indicated an interest to run, but I have a responsibility to the Senate, to the National Assembly, having been in the National Assembly for almost 24 years now. Uh, and when we have about 70 percent of our members of the National Assembly, especially in the Senate, who are new, uh, those of us that have been there longer uh, owe everybody that uh, uh, responsibility to at least help in mentoring those who are new, uh, even if we have no uh, presiding officer or principal officer position. President Tinubu has also met with the two men selected by the APC to clinch the positions of Speaker and Deputy Speaker. Both insist that maintaining a cordial relationship with the executive arm of government 
is key to the success of this administration. So there has never been any compromise in the National Assembly. The autonomy of the National Assembly has always been maintained and it will continue to be maintained. There will be no any way that uh, the independence of our National Assembly under our leadership will be compromised. Parliamentary sovereignty that will um, ensure that the borders of the mandates of various arms of government will be respected. But also recognizing that interdependence is key towards achieving any national objective. As the days draw closer, Nigerians are wondering how things will pan out. Should citizens expect the intrigues that played out in 2015, which led to the executive and legislative arms being at odds with each other? The answer to that question is just some days away. From State House Abuja, Kendi Amudu, Trust TV News. Women leaders have united in their call for increased gender diversity in the upcoming 10th National Assembly election, urging a consensus to elect a female lawmaker of proven integrity as the deputy speaker. They're demanding that women be appointed as chairs of key committees in the House of Representatives. They emphasize that gender diversity is crucial for promoting democracy and strengthening the legislative process. Speaking at a press conference in Abuja, they said that holding positions of influence is essential for amplifying women's voices in the country. Currently, women represent about 44% of Nigeria's voting population, yet less than 5% of the 1,553 women who contested in the 2023 elections across Nigeria were elected. Of the 1,459 legislative seats in the state and national levels, so far women have only won 75 seats. Alarmingly, there are 15 states without a single woman in their state house of assembly. Our demand is very clear. We are aware that they have zoned their speakership. But where they have done their, zoned their deputy speakership, there are women who are capable to fill that position. So what we are demanding is that we want to see a woman, at least a woman deputy speaker. There are 10 principal and presiding offices or positions at the National Assembly. And we are demanding 35% affirmative action. So what we are saying is that at least three of those 10 positions, you know, should have women. 35% affirmative action in all areas of governance is something very crucial at this time in our nation. And going by the inaugural speech of, the, of Mr. President, I would like to say we implore him to begin from this strategic moment of seeing that women who are few in number in the 10th Assembly need to be seen and need to be heard, conversing for the issues of women in Nigeria. Women need representation. We can't have over 100 million women in Nigeria and there's no woman on the decision-making table that is speaking on behalf of the women. Barely 72 hours after the announcement of the removal of fuel subsidy by the federal government, soaring fuel prices are now taking a toll on small businesses in Gombe State. Some of the business owners who spoke to Trust TV say the price of petrol per liter at the black market has skyrocketed from 300 naira to 700 naira, a situation that has negatively impacted their businesses. Trust TV's Ibrahim Ismail examines the impact of the fuel subsidy removal on a barber shop in Gombe State Capital. Take a look. Sunusi Yahya runs a barber shop in Gombe State Capital. Although he enjoys electricity supply occasionally, he, however, still buys fuel to power a generator in the absence of electricity. However, the young barber is worried by the recent fuel subsidy removal which nearly tripled the price of the commodity in the black market. If the subsidy was removed for national interest, the marketers should have been consulted before the decision was finalized. The price is exorbitant. 
a parashin litan yan kasuwa na gidajen mai from 220 naira to over 500 naira it should be reviewed to help the poor ta ta zauna da su a san yanda za a yi a rage abun don talaka yaji dadi away from sunusi yahya I met Muhammad Maigari, who has been forced to shut down his phone charging shop by the skyrocketing prices of petrol, which he is no longer able to afford. I couldn't open the business today because I can't afford the price of petrol and I don't want to operate in loss because some customers can't afford to pay for the services. When asked if they have adjusted prices of their services to reflect the current realities, Sunusi and Megari said they are still waiting for directives from their respective business associations. We used to buy petrol 350 naira per liter at the black market, but it jumped to 700 naira per liter. In the filling station, a liter which cost 190 naira now sells 550 or 540 naira. Our leaders in the Barbers Union are reviewing the situation for possible price increase from 200 naira. Our leaders are reviewing the situation. If they increase the price of phone charging, we will adopt it. The previous administration of former President Muhammad Buhari began the process for fuel subsidy removal and hinted that the process will be finalized in June. But Nigerians were shocked when President Bola Tinibu announced the subsidy removal in his inaugural speech on the 29th May. Ibrahim Ismail. Trust TV News, Gombe. Following the upward review of the petrol pump price by the NNPCL, petrol queues have disappeared across the commercial city of Kano, leading to an increase in the price of transportation, food items and other basic necessities of life. Trust TV correspondent Idris Jibrin, who went around the city, reports that residents are beginning to seek alternative means of transportation. His report. Across many petrol stations in Kanu, the price of PMS has since been adjusted at between 550 naira and 600 naira per liter. The black market price stood at 2,800 naira per 4 liter gallon. This is the highest and perhaps the worst petroleum price increase in the history of Kanu states. If we can really have what they are saying they will do, I don't mind the removal of the subsidy. But the main issue is there will be a lot of inflation in the town and there will be increase in poverty. But if really they are going to put the money in good use so that people in the nation will have ease in doing things, so I don't mind the removal of the subsidy. By implications, the transportation fees has jumped to between 70 and 100% across many motor parks and local bus stops forcing many residents to seek alternative means of transportation. If you consider the road, you will see many vehicles were dropped since yesterday. Mm. So even me, if not because of taking my children to school, I would have dropped my own since yesterday. As you can see, the price is 550 naira per liter. I want to fill my tank. It's about 10,000, 20,000, but because of the maintenance of children and the other things, but if I feel uh, 1,000, it's okay for me. I'll go around throughout the day. Market price of food products and other essential commodities has also been affected at the moment. Traders say the cost of transporting goods from the point of production to the point of sale has changed. For them today, sir, farm oil is adding 1,000 hmm. for each jarkan because of transportation. Because normally people are buying oil 200, 210, 197, but now they are selling 560 for a liter, double price. Although there is no scarcity of the product at the moment, but the number of vehicles flying the routes have significantly reduced since the upward review of the petrol price. Idris Jubrin, Trust TV News, Kanu. 
coalition of northern groups has urged Nigerians to hold independent oil marketers accountable for the current high fuel prices. The CNG expressed a concern that shortly after President Bola Tinubu announced the removal of fuel subsidies, the oil marketers increased the price of fuel. They also cautioned that the Nigerian Labour Congress against taking actions that do not serve the interests of the masses and instead serve their own agenda. In a statement issued by CNG spokesperson Abdulaziz Suleiman, the coalition observed that the NLC has a history of calling for protests or strikes, but ultimately negotiating with the government and abandoning the industrial action. They also demanded that the NLC explains its position during the preparation, presentation, defense and passing of the budget without a provision for fuel subsidies. While calling on President Bola Tinubu's administration to find a practical solution that minimizes harm to the innocent public and avoids compromising its economic recovery policies, the group wants the government to take action against the syndicate responsible for misappropriating public funds under the guise of fraudulent oil subsidies. Moving on to health, the Nigeria Center for Disease Control and Prevention has said Lassa fever has killed 162 persons across 28 states since the beginning of this year. In a situation report released on Thursday, the NCDC said 944 confirmed cases and 5,593 suspected cases of the disease were recorded within the period. The states include Ondo, Edo, Bochi, Taraba, Benue, Plateau, Ebonyi, Nasarawa, Kogi, Gombe, Enugu, Kano, Jigawa, Oyo, and FCT, among others. The report further said 72% of all confirmed Lassa fever cases in 2023 were reported from Ondo, Edo and Bochi states, and 28% were from 25 states which confirmed Lassa fever cases. It also said the number of suspected cases incre increased compared to that reported for the same period in 2022. You're watching Trust News Update coming up after the break. We take a look at how former president can stay longer in ancestral home. Do stay with us. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. You're still watching Trust News Update, a recap of our top stories. We told you that troops rescue 10 kidnapped victims, kills cause of bandits in some first state. We also heard that President Tinubu meets Senate President Speaker House of Assembly at Aso Rock as women demand deputy speakership positions. 
Moving to more stories, Chairman National Population Commission, Nasser Issa Kwara, and the National President, Population Association of Nigeria, Professor Roda Mundi, believe that to reverse the negative impact of its population growth on insecurity, unemployment, and dwindling economic fortunes, the nation must consider the implementation of the national population policy and invest in family planning programs. They spoke during the 41st inaugural lecture of the University of Abuja on Thursday. The report. On the issue of continuous delay in the conduct of the digitalized national population and housing census, the Commission says although no new date has been issued, it is prepared to conduct the exercise and ready to work with the new administration on provision of accurate demographic data. He, however, said the Commission requires more funding away from the original $1.8 billion earmarked by the Commission. How soon I cannot decide. This new government that comes in will uh, give us uh, a date. As far as uh, preparation uh, is concerned, we've done uh, more than 80% uh, of the preparation. What we need is um, the proper uh, uh, time to conduct the census without um, challenges. Issue of uh, the uh, rains, issue of uh, new classrooms that we need in every local government to conduct um, uh, the uh, uh, training before the census and the finance. All those things have to be all in place before I can say yes, we are ready to uh, do the census and provide uh, Nigeria uh, the much needed data that uh, in fact this administration needs. The nation's population, which is expected to hit 400 million by 2050, represents a demographic nightmare for the country that is already beset with several development challenges ranging from acute poverty to governance and political instability. But experts have urged President Bola Ahmed Tinubu to provide adequate funding for family planning, implement the national policy on population, and collaborate with subnational governments to ensure a productive population that will drive nation growth. That even in the implementation, the implementation of the policy also needs funding. So you must release the fund if you want to track all the things. You want things to be implemented. You don't have a policy just to keep. You want certain things to be implemented. And then the implementation cannot just go on without money, without funding. Although population in itself is not a negative challenge, where more people are pursuing less economic opportunities, the likelihood for banditry, criminality and backwardness will spell doom for the country if left unchecked. Aisha Salihu, Trust TV News, Abuja. Former President Muhammad Buhari has returned to his country home in Doura last Monday after serving the nation for eight years as President and Commander-in-Chief with enormous powers and resources at his disposal. The Doura Emirates welcomed Buhari with a splendid daba, but the question many are asking is if the ancient city has the infrastructure and other facilities to take care of his needs. Abdullahi Yamadi speaks to the residents on this. While in office as president, Buhari will jet out of the country for medical attention in the United Kingdom. This happened on several occasions. Now that he has left office, will he enjoy the luxury of medical care in his native Dora? The Dora residents are quick to mention that they have an Air Force reference hospital and the general hospital which has converted to a federal medical center. This is in addition to this finest roads network fitted with solar powered street lights as part of former president's contributions to the city. Beyond that, there is the establishment of Federal Polytechnic and University of Transportation beside two military formations, all in the ancient city of Tawra. Alhamdulillah, 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 Rabbi Yes, the homecoming of President Muhammad Buhari on May 29 is a thing of joy to every son and daughter of Dora Emirate and Kassana State as a whole. The reason is simple. Having had eight successful years as president of our great nation, he deserves a rest at his place of birth. Uh, everything has a time. Muhammad Buhari succeeded to have... Uh, uh, led or to have 
led this uh, country for good eight years. And uh, he did his best uh, for the development uh, in many sectors in this country. But beyond all this, are facilities available in Daura to make the former president comfortable to stay? Daura residents say they are over excited that the retired general is in their midst, staying with them after the national assignment. We will say that he done his best. At least some of our youth has gotten jobs. I have seen a lot of development, even the ones still ongoing and the ones that have been established. The military and the rest of them, businesses and the rest of them are all going on. Even the Imam of Daura, Umar Farouk Umar, could not hide his feelings over what he calls the unprecedented performance of the former President Buhari and the overwhelming support he has enjoyed from all Nigerians in the last eight years. On my part, I want you this opportunity to thank all Nigerians irrespective of religious or ethnic affiliation. We'll extend Sam to the President Bola Matinibu to succeed. However, observers say in the next coming days, it will be known whether or not the Asian city of Dora would be the permanent home of the former president. Abdullahi Ismayamadi, Trust Television News, Kazana. In business, Naira remained unchanged on Thursday, exchanging at 464 Naira, 67 Kobo to $1 at the investors and exporters window. The local currency did not change from its value on Wednesday, while the open indicative rate closed at 464 Naira, 64 Kobo to $1 on Thursday. An exchange rate of 464 Naira to the dollar was the highest rate recorded within the day's trading before it settled at 464 Naira, 67 Kobo. The Naira sold for as low as 460 to the dollar within the day's trading. A total of $250.98 was traded at the official investors and exporters window on Thursday. On the foreign scene, nine people have died in clashes across Senegal after a court sentenced firebrand opposition leader Usman Sonko to two years in jail. After Thursday's verdict, clashes broke out between police and protester. Buses were set alight in the capital, Dakar, and disturbances were reported elsewhere, including the city of Zigashaw, where Sonko has been mayor since 2022. Two police officials told AFP on condition of anonymity that at least three of the deaths occurred at demonstrations in Zigashaw and a policeman was stoned to death by young protesters in the capital. The 48-year-old did not attend the trial and was absent when Thursday's judgment was handed down. Justice Minister Ismaila Madio told journalists that the court did not rule on whether he should be arrested, but after two years of confrontation with the authorities, the head of the PASTEF Patriots Party could now be arrested at any time. When the Dakar Criminal Court handed down the verdict, Sanko's party called on the Senegalese people to take to the streets. Several social media and messaging platforms, including WhatsApp, Instagram and YouTube, were facing serious access restrictions in Senegal late Thursday. And with that, we've come to the end of Trust News Update. Don't forget to follow us across all our social media platforms. I'm Darshan Hussein Usman. Thanks for watching.